Hello everyone and welcome to this video, the fourth part in the push forward of vectors on manifold series. And so this video looks at how functions can be pulled back from one manifold to another. Uh, this is crucial when applying tangent vectors which act as differential operators since they can only act on functions defined on the same manifold. Now pullbacks preserve smoothness and compatibility between manifolds ensuring that geometric operations like differentiation and integration remain valid under transformations. Now, this is particularly important in physics such as in general relativity where we transform fields, gravitational potentials or scalar fields uh, between different coordinate systems or reference frames. So really the focus is going to be the action of the push forward on functions but that will involve pulling those functions back. All right, so let's make a start. And uh, we'll probably hide that, move that out of the way. All right, so let's look at how the push forward of a vector acts on functions. Now, in the last couple of videos, you've seen a manifold M and a manifold N. Um, you've seen a point on that manifold uh, P here, you've seen a map between the manifolds, F is a map from M to N, um, and a point P, and in the tangent space to the manifold M at the point P, tangent space of the manifold M at the point P, you have a vector, V subscript P, P indicating the point P. Now under this map, this vector is, as we've seen in the previous uh, videos, is pushed forward to this point here, but under the map, this point becomes F of P under the map F. This is the tangent space to the manifold N at the point F of P. And um, while I'm not showing the push forward vector here at the moment because that's not the focus at the moment, I'm just reminding you of the setup. So a tangent vector VP at a point P belongs to M lies in the tangent space TPM, which means that VP is an element of the tangent space of manifold at P. Now, the tangent vector V is a differential operator, meaning it acts on smooth functions, say F, defined on M by taking directional derivatives. So we can write the vector V in its component form, VI partial partial XI. Uh, these are the basis vectors in each of the direct coordinate directions. Uh, I will be equal to the number of um, the dimension of the tangent space. Um, and V acting on F is VI partial partial XI acting on F, which is VI partial f, partial xi. So you can see this is the directional derivative, rate of change of f in the direction v. All right. Now, the push forward map, f star, the push forward f star p, is a map that takes a tangent vector vp, belongs to the tangent space to, uh, to the manifold m at the point p, at the point p and m, and produces a tangent vector at the point f of p belongs to n. So just revising what we've done in the previous videos. Now the vector V on M is represented as a directional derivative, meaning it acts on smooth functions F on M by taking the derivative of F in the direction of V. In general, we want to know how V looks in the context of N, the manifold N. The push forward helps transform V into a corresponding tangent vector on N, and that's been the focus of the uh, first three videos in this series. Okay, and we've found uh, this relationship here, um, the push forward of the vector V at the point P is equal to the Jacobian matrix of F uh, acting on V evaluated at the point P. And that was all the subject of previous video. So here is nothing more than a reminder. All right, <clears throat> now how the push forward acts on functions, and that's the focus of this video. So suppose G uh, we have the uh, function G, which is a map, or the map G from N to the reals, uh, is a smooth function defined on N, uh, smooth as in no sudden changes of gradient, no discontinuities. And we want to see how the push forward of V, denoted F star P of V, acts on G. Now, basically we're gonna pull G back to F and then act on it with the vector in the tangent space of manifold at M. But anyway, so, Step one is we pull back the function g to m. I'll give you a diagram of this shortly. Now, since g is defined on n, you cannot directly apply v, which lives in m. If you remember, that was in the tangent space to the manifold m, uh, to g, right? So you can't apply v to g. 
because v-axon function is defined on m. However, we can use the, pull, the map f to pull back g, the function g, to a function on m. Okay, and that's what we're focusing on here. Now, the pullback of g by f, do you know g composed of f, is a new function defined on m given by g composed of f at the point p is equal to g of f of p, which takes a point p belongs to m, maps it to f of p belongs to n, and then evaluates g at f of p. I'll show you a diagram, shall we? This creates a function g composed of f on m that can now be acted on by v, and that's the whole point of this video. All right, so diagrammatically, here we go. Here's our manifold M, our manifold N. Here are the tangent spaces again. Here's our map F from M to N. Here's our point P, F of P, okay. Here's our map, this red arrow, G from N to the reals, okay. And that is the same thing as G composed of F. In other words, you can take G here and pull it back against this map here, to m and then evaluate it and then of course you can act on it with v which we'll get to later but the point is we have this second map here mapping of g from n to r g is a map from n to r takes points on n and maps them to the reals but we can by composing g with f this map here we can pull g back onto this manifold here and then we can evaluate it which takes us to the reals. So G composed of F is G F of P, all right? Pulls back G to here, and we find that belongs to the reals, okay? Just as in here, if you substitute F of P into G here, that maps you straight from there to there to the reals. So you can go this way, or you can pull G back to here and then evaluate it, and it takes you to the reals, okay? So that's what we're getting at here. All right, step two, applying the vector v to the pulled back function. Note that g composed of f is a function on m now. We can apply the tangent vector v, which belong to the tangent space to m at the point p, to this pulled back function. Now, v is a differential operator, so applying v to g composed of f means taking the directional derivative of g composed of f, as I showed you near the beginning of the video. In the direction, because we think of vectors as differential operators, g composed of f in the direction of v at the point p belongs to m. All right, so applying v now, acting on g composed of f, gives us a directional derivative of g composed of f in the direction of v at the point p belongs to m. So, in other words, if I write this out in this component form, we have v composed uh, acting on g composed of f, so v acting on. And if we write out V in its component form, VI partial partial XI, the basis operators acting on G composed of F. So you can see that's the directional derivative of G composed of F in the direction of V. Now this quantity is a real number, which represents how the function G on N changes along the direction of the vector V on M when mapped through F. Okay, so that mapping is important there. Um, and to... I'm going to give you a concrete example to show how this becomes a real number. All right, so step three, interpretation of push forward. The result V acting on G composed of F is the same as the action of the push forward vector V star P of V on the function G defined on N. All right, so in other words, F star P of V, the vector V acting on G gives us the same result as V acting on G composed of F, which is G pulled back to the manifold M. So this is the action of the push forward vector on G on the manifold N in the tangent space of the manifold N. And this is related, and that's related to the action of V on G composed of F on the manifold M in the tangent space of that the relevant point P. This is the direct definition of how the push forward acts on smooth functions. So just to sum, summarize that. The function g is defined on n, but by composing it with f, we pull it back to m, creating a new smooth function g composed of f that is defined on m. This new function takes any point p belongs to m and returns the value g composed of f of p, which belongs to the reals. All right, now the tangent vector, excuse me, the tangent vector v 
which, it, which is an element of the uh, tangent space to the manifold m of the point p, acts on this pulled back function g composed of f by taking its directional derivative at the point p belongs to m. This means v acting on g composed of f gives the rate of change of the function g composed of f in the direction specified by v at p. All right, let's bring this all down now to a concrete example. So let's consider an example where a manifold M is R2, Euclidean space, and N is also R2, and the smooth map F is a map from R2 to R2. It's given by F of X, Y equals, now this in vector form here is U of X of Y, W of X of Y, and that is U of X of Y is X squared minus Y squared, W X of Y is 2XY. So F takes a point X, Y, uh, belongs to M, all right, and maps it to U, W, belongs to N, using the given expressions for U and W. Also now, let G be a map from R2 to R, be a smooth function defined on N, a function N defined as G, U, W, is U plus W, just a simple addition of the coordinates, just for the sake of argument. All right, now our tangent vector here, on the manifold M, a tangent vector V is uh, an element of the tangent space of manifold M at the point one one on M. Represented by the differential operator V is partial partial X evaluated at one one. So here's our V subscript P. Now this is the partial derivative with respect to X at the point one one in M. Okay, so step one, pulling back the function G composed of F. So since G is defined on N in terms of U and W, we need to pull back g to m using the map f. This gives us a new function on m denoted g composed of f defined as g composed of f of xy is g of f of xy which is g of u of xy w of xy which is now since g of u w is u plus w that's simply x squared minus y squared is u plus 2xy is w okay and that's what we get so that's g composed of f there. All right, that's the pullback function G composed of F on M is this object here. Now, step two is apply the tangent vector V equals partial partial X. Uh, and just remember, it is at the point one one uh, to G composed of F. Now we apply the tangent vector V is partial partial X to the um, pullback function G composed of F. This means, um, now where did this V there's no particular reason I've chosen partial partial x for v. It's just for argument. It's just I could use a more complicated. I could have plus other um, vectors as well, basis vectors as well. But just for the sake of argument, there's no particular reason for choosing this. I could have chosen something more complicated. I could have chosen things with numbers in front, and I could have a linear combination of different basis vectors. But I don't want to make the example uh, complex than it needs to be, just to illustrate the point. So there's no particular reason for choosing partial partial x. I, could have chosen partial partial y or combination of the two but uh, just for argument's sake I'm just using this one all right so this means now we take the partial derivative g composed of f with respect to x at the point one one so first compute the derivative of g composed of f with respect to x so partial partial x of all that well you get 2x and here you get 2y right? because you're carrying out the partial derivative with respect to x all right now evaluate this at the point x, y is 1, 1 on M. So partial, partial x, g composed of f, evaluate at 1, 1 on M in the tangent space uh, to the manifold M at point 1, 1. x is 1, y is 1. You get this, because remember we had 2x plus 2y, so it gives us 4. Okay, now to interpret this, so here, hence the action of the vector v equals partial, partial x on the pullback function g composed of f gives us the real number 4. This is the rate of change of the function g composed of f in the direction of v at the point 1, 1. Now what we've done is we pulled back g from, from manifold n to manifold m, right? and then we've acted on it with v, the vector v which lives in the tangent space to the manifold m. Okay? And that's the same as if we have taken the pushed forward vector on n, on, in the tangent space to n at the point f of p, and acted on it with that uh, function g, acted it, use that to act on the function g. All right. 
uh, same thing, same result. So in this example, V acting on G composed of F represents the directional derivative of the pullback function G of F in the direction of the vector V equals partial partial X at the point one one, and it produces the real number four. This il illustrates how a vector as a differential operator can output a number when applied to a function via the push forward process. All right. Now, um, I'm just going to give you a brief summary of the example, which is going to be the focus of the next video. So I'm going to show an example of this in special relativity, but I'm just going to briefly outline what that is. All right, so Lorentz transformations and special relativity. So in special relativity, coordinate transformations between inertial frames are governed by the Lorentz transformation. For example, consider two reference frames related by Lorentz transformation F. If G of UW is some scalar quantity defined in one frame, e.g. energy or momentum, something like that, some scalar quantity, we can pull it back to the other frame using G composed of F. Then we might compute how this quantity changes under a vector field V associated with an observer's velocity or, okay? So for instance, let uh, G be X0, X1, often X0 being time component, and the first spatial coordinate, represent a scalar function of time and space coordinates. A tangent vector V, such as partial partial T, can then be applied to G composed of F, capturing how the scalar quantity evolves as seen by an observer in a different frame. Now in the next video, this example is going to be fleshed out in detail, and that's the focus of the entire video after this one. All right, so just coming back now to a diagram. Um, remember, we've had uh, two manifolds, M and N. We've had at a point P on the manifold M, we have a vector in the tangent space to M at the point P. We have a map that maps the map F, which maps points on M to points on N. So point P on M here becomes F of P on N. Um, under the push forward, F star P of V, we push forward this vector V subscript P to the manifold here. Okay, that's that vector there. And we could act on that with G, all right, to give us a scalar here. So G is a map from N to R, all right. Or what we could do is we could pull G back to the manifold M and evaluate it there, which is a map from here, G composed of F um, at the point P is G of F of P, which also belongs to the reals. So what I'm trying to say here is that the push forward of this vector to this manifold, okay, that's the vector V, acting on the scalar function G, is the same as, because we can pull G back to M, is the same as the vector V over here on M, in the tangent space to M, acting on the composed function G composed of F. All right, so these two things are the same thing. And it's all because we can pull this scalar function G back, this function G back to M. And that's been the point of this video. All right, so I think that's it. We're finished for today. I hope you find this, um, I was going to say, I hope you find this useful um, <clears throat> and uh, informative. I, I hope it's helped in some way and uh, makes the ideas clear. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, which will focus on how this can be applied in special relativity. It will focus on a single example of special relativity, and we'll look at that in a bit of detail. All right, thank you for watching. Have a good day and uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye.